And we are back. Democrats are pushing for the impeachment of President Donald Trump for his effort for having a foreign leader investigate his political opponents. Now, with this impeachment hearing happening today, what could this mean for the rest of his presidency? Also on the local front, new criminal justice reform will eliminate cash bail in New York with this new bail reform taking place in January of 2020. The question is, what does it mean for the community? Well, joining us now to talk about more is New York State Senator of the District 36, Jamal T. Bailey. Good to have you. Good to have you, Darren. Hey, Good thank to you. you. Appreciate it. Hey, it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Let me get right at it. Before we talk to the last segment about decriminalization, yes. right? That's huge for you because you've got a bill that really deals with that. Actually, that, so the, the expungement piece was the bill that, we, that I was able to get passed in this, this past legislative session. So the biggest piece about expungement is this. People's lives have been ruined by the possession of, of cannabis. Whether you, whatever you think about it may be, mm -hmm. it has limited people's access to housing. It has limited people's access to employment, to education. So even if we could not get ultimately, ultimately get the uh, adult use legalization, we got expungement, and that, that, that's a huge victory for our communities. And any, any legalization, in my opinion, has to come with significant reinvestment in impacted communities. When we talk about, uh, you know, David and I talked about legislation getting it passed, right? It's really a huge mountainous move up, up in uh, Albany. How do you see this playing out? How quickly do we see this playing out? It's been a huge culture change to get to change people's minds about what they think about cannabis. It, it, it has been derided for so many years socially. It's been a social pariah. But now people are starting to look at the benefits of medical marijuana. We have the medical marijuana program. And now people looking at other states. Illinois was the first state to pass it legislatively uh, in this, this past year. So now they've, they've gone away from the referendum and that legislature stood up and, and they were able to pass it in their own legislation the, and the governor signed the bill. So hopefully in the York, we can get that done this coming this legis legislative session. And talk a little bit more about staying with decriminalization. Also talk about cash bail reform, right? Because that's a huge thing on the legal front as well. It's going to end soon. Uh, your thoughts? So uh, cash bail is going, to, is going to end for the majority of, uh, for misdemeanors and the majority of nonviolent felonies. So what that means is this, we're trying to end detention based upon your wealth. And, and, the, and the comparison has always been made. Harvey Weinstein gets to walk free while, while other people get to, they have to go, they have to go in jail. It should not matter how much money you have in your bank account. That should not be determinant of, of whether you are free or not. And for too long in our state, too long in our country for that matter, people have been re have remained incarcerated for so long solely because they cannot afford bail. We have to put a stop to that. Yeah. And so, as we look at it right now, you're confident with the way things are going? I believe so. I, I believe so. I think that we've done the right thing for the right reason. We, we've had, this has been something that we've been looking at for quite some time, even though the Democrats were, in the, were not in the majority in the New York State Senate. Mm -hmm. This is something that had been contemplated for years and years. We have, we've had many, many conversations, and this is the right thing to do because wealth-based attention is abhorrent. Well, I got you here. Talk to me a little bit about Rikers Island right quick. Your thoughts about that? Well, the closure, the closure was important, but we have to make sure that we're looking at the borough-based system in, a, in, in an appropriate fashion, making sure that the sites of these borough-based jails are appropriate mm -hmm. and closer. In, in my opinion, I believe that the site should be closer to the courthouse as opposed to the current location where it's at now. That, that's my issue and concern. But the issue with Rikers was that it was much maligned. There were, there were a lot of things going on. So I do agree with the fresh approach, but we have to be more mindful and, and, uh, and contemplative about the way that we go about that. Yeah, we had Khalif Brown, his uh, brother here. We talked to him with him about that. A lot of people really became aware of the Rikers Island situation much because of Khalif Browder. Uh, and prayerfully that hopefully we'll get some great resolve out of this. You're optimistic that it'll happen sometime Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. I've had multiple conversations with the King Browder, his brother, who, and when we were able to get the speedy trial bill also passed uh, Khalif's law so that, you know, no longer will you languish in Rikers Island for, for so long solely because, again, you can't afford a bail or you are you accused of something that you simply didn't do. We're not asking to try to stop public safety. I want to be very clear about that. Right. I'm a, I'm a father uh, of two daughters and I want my wife and my kids to be incredibly safe. But detention based upon you not having evidence, which is the discovery laws, speedy trial, you not being able to get to your trial fast enough or simply because you can't afford bail, that's abhorrent and I'm glad we were finally able to move away from that. Mm. Moving along, today's big day in Washington, D.C. Impeachment hearings, your thoughts? I, I, I would say it's about time. I, I, I think that, that, that our president who holds the highest office in the land, it, we can't treat him any different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. He's not above the law, point blank, period. And we have to make sure that we hold him accountable to the same standards that we would hold any American citizen when it, when it comes to breaking the law, when it comes to flouting um, laws about the quid pro quo, withholding aid in, so, to, so that you can have Biden's son investigated. That, that is something that is not... Um, that, that's not something that, that, that a president should be doing, and, and I believe that he should be impeached. A lot of people say that in order for the Democrats to win back the presidency, there's going to have to be a, a message greater than anti-Trump. 
Agree? Without you, a doubt. And do you feel like the message is getting across? Without a doubt. I, I think that, one, we, we have to show that Democrats in state houses and Democrats in Congress, that not only are we there and occupying space, we are working. We are making this country better. We are improving upon 2016, the era of 2016. A new era can begin in 2020 if we get it right and get it done this coming, this coming uh, November. What we see uh, happening, red states now becoming blue, recent uh, election results. Are you optimistic going into 2020? I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing more of a purple rain. You know, I'm, I'm a Prince fan, but, but we're starting to see more of a purple rain. These red states are finally starting to see the era of their past ways and simply voting party lines when it doesn't benefit them. I'm all for bipartisanship, but you have to make sure that what you're saying is 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 proper and that it, and that it, and that your that your representatives are representing the needs of the people, not just some sort of ideology. Okay, gotta get the final question in before we go on time budget, right? We know that's a big challenge for New York State. You guys have been able to do it. Uh, are you optimistic about an on time budget this year? Absolutely, with with our new leadership and the leadership of Andre Stewart Cousins and Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty, I think that we have historic leadership, and with historic leadership, becomes it's a new day, it's a new day in Albany. All right. And uh, any message you want to send to your district before we leave? I, I just want to say thank you once again for allowing me to have the best job in the world, aside from Nick's point guard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but honestly, being a state senator of the 36th senatorial district it, it has been incredible. I, I appreciate them allowing me to do that, and I'm going to continue to work hard for them. You know, we can both try out for the Knicks and still make it today, right? You know, listen, it's, it's been rough. <laughs> it's been rough. I know. Senator Jamal Bailey, thank you. All right, listen, now for more information on Senator Bailey, you can visit his website at NewYorkSenator.gov, Senator Jamal T. Bailey. You can also visit him on social media at Facebook and Twitter at Jamal Bailey or Instagram, Jamal T. Bailey 36. Take a quick break. We've got more open coming up right after this.